All right, so last time uh, I hacked one of these little Amazon dash buttons right here to order me Domino's Pizza. Um, I made a little note app that would hijack the ARP request coming from this guy which talks to your Wi-Fi router and then when it intercepted it, it would go ahead and kick off my pizza order. Um, so it's kind of like a one-time uh, order that you can set up for your favorite pizza or your favorite uh, order from Domino's. Um, and then when I started thinking about it, I was like, what goes best with pizza? Um, well, it's obviously beer. Um, so definitely wanted to get a way that I could take one of these guys and get beer to me at my door. Um, so I started looking around um, and I found a company called Drizzly. Um, Drizzly, they have an API that allows you to have alcohol delivery to you within an hour. Um, so I reached out to them and requested access to their API and they love the idea of, of this beer button basically. Um, so I teamed up with them, um, got access to their API and from there um, I have the Drizzly Dash is what I ended up making. Um, so I kind of walked through what I did. Um, here's the readme. Um, what I ended up doing, I have an account creation script that you can run. Um, it basically just asks you for your partner token, which Drizzly hands out to you to have access to their API. Um, and then it just asks you for your first name, last name, birthday, username, password. Uh, and it will create an account for you. From there, you can run my setup script, um, which kind of does the same thing. It just asks for your, your MAC address um, of your Amazon Dash button so you can intercept it. Um, and then you log in with your Drizzly account that you already set up your credit card and your address for. Um, so it'll find the closest store for you. And then you can run the setup script again and then you can start asking um, alcohol queries. So like depending on what you want to order from the store, um, it'll tell you what's available. And then from there, you can basically build your order. Um, and all you need to do is have a environment file which I have an example of one. And here's the example. It just kind of ho hosts all your private information. Um, so your store ID, your longitude, latitude, um, see if the Drizzly can deliver in your area. Um, and then just some basic stuff like the partner token and your user token. Um, from there, all you have to do is run npm start and it'll start listening for that button being pressed. So all I gotta do is take this guy out, click that button, Look at there, it says dash button found, and then it gave me an error. It says check out successful, and it responded with the store is currently out of uh, my fresh squeeze IPA that I wanted. Um, so right now, this is just basically just running in sandbox mode, um, so nothing official, um, and I can't actually order using this button at the moment. All you gotta do is swap out a few things, and you can go ahead and order. And I'm gonna show you the real big thing that I'm actually gonna order my beer off of which is the Amazon IoT button. So I made two versions of this application, one that can run on the Node.js uh, hijacker, basically, um, and then also the officially supported Amazon AWS IoT button, which you can write your own Lambda scripts for. So I'll go ahead and show you that here in a second. So right here is my Lambda function that I wrote for the AWS Lambda. Um, part of the AWS suite. Um, and this basically, if you just kind of skim it over, here's your API token that you need from Drizzly and your user token for your logged in user. And then you have some dummy information. These aren't linked up to anything. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Um, and then you kind of can build your order. So the cool thing you can do with the IoT button is you can set up a single, double, and long click. So basically, you can have three different orders set up for one of these guys. And the cool thing about these guys is they're always running. So as long as it's connected to your Wi-Fi, you don't need to set up a server or a Raspberry Pi or anything. These are automatically going to go to your AWS account and run whatever you have set up for this guy. Um, so you can set up one of these Lambda functions and it can always be listening for a single, double, or long click. And basically what I did, I set up two beers uh, for my single click. And then for my double click, set up double that order. For my long click, I set up uh, whiskey and vodka for a long night, you know. And then if you kind of go down here, it just kind of grabs your information and sends it off to Drizzly. Um, so here it is uh, on the AWS uh, IoT platform right here. Uh, so let me go ahead 
and load this up with the production data. So right now, this is loaded up with my production data. Um, so this is a live order. So let me go here and I'll reload my logs to show that I'm not cheating or have anything up my sleeve. And then right here, go ahead and press this guy. So this guy does take a little bit longer to access the AWS servers um, than say something like this. So as you can see here on the screen, um, it successfully did order um, about uh, zero minutes ago for a total of $35. Um, I ordered some fresh squeeze IPA, um, some grapefruit sculpin IPA. Love that bitter beer. All right. So basically, uh, it says the driver is assigned and he's on his way. And I also did receive uh, an email right here, and it's going to deliver to me um, here and on shortly. So yeah, the cool thing is you do get an order confirmation email from Drizzly, so you don't have to worry about if if you're worrying about the order actually went through or not. Um, yeah, that's the Amazon AWS IoT button, ordering Drizzly. No, no, that's not right. like oh, hey. Hi. Good? Yeah, that's me. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Did it work? Yes. Oh, my God, it worked. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Take care.